welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore, and now I am going to explain how to use arrays with the objects. Okay, in this session, I am going to cover array of object, array of objects. You know that array is used for to store several values of same type under one name. Okay, in previous session, we have discussed how to use array inside the class how to use the array inside the class means how to declare data members using arrays but this time i am going to discuss how to declare the objects using arrays and before going to discuss this concept first of all why we have to declare the objects using arrays now just watch this previous example actually in this example subject is an array means it is able to store six subject marks under one name later okay fine it is able to store six subjects but it one this one contain one id number one name six subjects that means this data belongs to one student only this data belongs to one student okay and now come to here in main function i have declared student s yes. actually s is what object okay when s object created memory allocated like this inside the stack the memory allocated like this and memory allocated for what id number name and six subjects and here i have stored id number 1 name rama subject some marks okay that means actually it contains rama details now i want to add for example i want to store sita details also okay but here how many objects are created only one object and one object is able to store only one data means one record at a time okay but my requirement i want to store all the students data then what we have to go for now we have to declare several objects like this student s1 s2 s60 now watch this how many objects are created s1 to s60 now what happens inside the stack now it is the s1 memory okay later for s2 also memory required now it is created s2 now s2 memory and s3 memory next s60 memory s2 s3 like this total how many objects are created 60 objects all are having same data now yes all are having the same data now the point is to access this uh, object data we have to write s1 dot get student next for this one s2 dot get student s3 dot get like this how many times we have to 60 times and what about the result once again another 60 times that means it increases the program size and we have to remember all the object names once again that's why once again it is getting critical to avoid this problem to avoid this problem just declare the object using array see this now i am going to declare like this s of 60 now what happens here object names are what in previous example s1 s2 s3 s60 no? now how the memory allocated watch this just assume it is our stack now okay it is id name and here to here subject of 0 1 2 3 4 5 and it is the 0 row 1 2 like this up to 59 now watch it the name is what yes object name yes and now this name is s of 0 s of 1 s of 2 s of 3 like that s of 59 now watch it how many names i have used only one but under one object name we are storing 60 records because of it is allows to store it allows to store first record it allows to store second third fourth like this how many records we can store means 60 records under one name that is why one for loop is enough now in previous example what happened s1 dot get student s2 dot get student like that s60 dot get student 60 times but this time one for loop and here in place of s s of i dot get student 
ok, I am going to take a for loop then for loop i value started with 0. Now, it becomes s of 0, s of 0 means this one next i value incremented s of 1, s of 2. See this how many times I have? I have used it 60 times, but how many times I have declared or program is going only one line, only one time I have used it in program, but it is internally working 60 times. That is why program size reduced, when program size is reduced performance is increased and errors also minimized. That is why we can declare the objects using arrays. Okay? That is why we can declare, we have to declare the objects using arrays. That is why arrays reduce the program size. Now, I am going to implement this. I will show you how to implement this example in practical. Okay? Once again, I am going through student class. First, class student is there. Okay? Here also, int id character name of 20 next in public area void get student next void put student two member functions next class close now it is the class class student id member name data members get student put student are the member functions okay next here one class is declared. Later we have to define the members. Now, now I am going to define the member. First outside the class, that is why void. Okay. Here what it is? Student class. That is why stu colon colon get student. Okay. And now here I have to use this get student function how many times? 60 times. Uh, why? Because I am having 60 objects, means array of objects. Okay, fine. Now, here watch it what I am doing here. C in directly greater than greater than id and name. Okay, program close. Actually, we know that C in is used for input. Now, the value is stored in id here name. Okay, fine. Later, I want to print the data void student colon colon put student and here just I am going to give like this see out first id here slash t actually slash t gives what space and here name and here end l ok. Now what happens first id printed we are getting a tab space and name printed end l next line ok fine and member function definitions completed get is for c in means input and put student for c out printing purpose. Now, how to implement, how to call the member function? It is the main function. First of all, stu s of 60. Now, what happens? 60 objects are created with one name. Okay. Now, it is our stack and here the memory created like this. Suppose it is the 0 row 1, 2, 3 and it is the id, it is the name because of I am having only 2 members and object name, yes, ok fine. Now, the memory is created and each object size is 22 bytes, why because id 2 bytes, ok, here 2 bytes and here 20 bytes name, that is why 22 bytes like this for everything. How many times like this? Total 59 means 60, 0 to 59. They are created like this. Now, I want to read the first student data. That is why here int n. Here, why we need the n? Actually, here we can store 60 students' data, but I am not interested to enter 60 students' data. Actually, it allows to store 60 students data, but I am not interested because of it is going to take more time. That is why I am going to input the n value, n value means it is reading the value from the user at run time 3 na 5 or 10 na like this. Okay? That is why here I am going to say like this and i is for loop next CLR SCR objects are created as array. Now, it is object array or array of objects. It is called array of objects or object array. 
next. Now, here I am going to write like this enter number of students. Okay. See this here how many objects are there 60 and each object allows to store one student data like this 60 are there no? that means we can store maximum of 60 only no? that is why in bracket I am giving the clue 1 to 60. Now, I said enter number of students and the value should be in 1 to 60. Okay, fine. C in n. Suppose user entered 100, user entered minus 5, they are not allowed now because of 100 means exceed the capacity, minus 5 means meaningless. That is why here if n less than 1 or n greater than 60, see out simply size or number n value 1 to 60 only. Okay. Now, value 1 to 60 means user is getting the value 1 to 60 only else, else means what? Suppose user entered correct value for example, n value 3 that means the user want to store 3 students data. Now, the user is going to store 3 students data else. Okay. Now, I have to enter 3 students only now and that is why here I am going to write i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus already i declare you know, and n also declare you know. now n value is what 3 and i value is what 0 now i value started at 0 and here watch it s of i dot get student okay s of i i value is what 0 means s of 0 means this one you know, and that one contains id means here s of i dot get student it is reading data into id name means this one and this one now this one this one stored later what happens i plus plus i value becomes 1 means s of 1 later s of 2 like that how many times 3 times that means 3 students data stored inside the stack now 3 students data stored inside the stack that is why here n value is depended by the user and loop is also going to repeat n times. Now, n students data completed. Okay. Later, we have to show the result now. See out after storing the data, see out first I want to print id slash t, later name, later slash n. Now, what happens on the screen? Suppose it is our screen, just assume it is our screen. First id printed, next tab space, later name due to slash n cursor move to next line. Here I want to enter some underline, that is why underline. Okay. Now, below this one underline created. Here I want to print the stu 3 students data, that is why for how many students are there? 3 students we are having, that is already looping variable is there. No? then i equal to 0, next i less than n value, n value is what 3, now 3 times repeated i plus plus and here simply say like this s of i dot put student, actually put student means uh, this one now, now put student of first which one printed id, exactly below the id, id number is going to print means here id number printed suppose 1 and name some name printed later here endl is there no due to endl what happens cursor move to next line now i value incremented i value becomes 1 1 means this record no now this record printed here next once again endl endl later i plus plus i value becomes 2 2 means this one no now finished now 3 times 3 records are displayed no now, at last simply say get ch program finish. Now, see this uh, simple program and here this program is able to store 60 students data at a time even though 600 same program, 6000 same program that is why arrays reduce our program size. When we are going, are going to use the arrays in our program, they are going to be reduce our program size and major thing is 
all the objects are declared with one name that is why it is not required to remember all the names okay? because of only one variable name is enough. It is how to declare the objects using array that is why it is called array of objects or object array. Okay? It is how to use the arrays with objects, but here some problems we are facing in next session how to solve this problem that is dynamic objects okay because of here we are facing some problem the size should be static here 60 i have declared but i have how many i have used only 3 that means a remaining memory wasted now in next session i will cover how to save the memory using dynamic objects thank you for watching mm -hmm.